third question, and that is in the name of Assembly Member Russell, Safe Routes to Schools. Um, we promised to establish uh, safe walking routes to give children uh, cleaner and safer journeys to schools. And in 2017, we will be providing 148 million of funding to London's boroughs to deliver the Healthy Streets approach, which includes improvements uh, to these uh, routes to school. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we have funded uh, air quality audits at uh, 50 primary schools, and uh, my colleagues Dr. Will Norman and obviously Shirley Rodriguez, our Deputy Mayor for Environment, are very closely involved in seeing those programmes uh, through with our colleagues out there. Thank you. Um, according to the 2014-15 uh, National Travel Survey, only 46% of children aged 5 to 10 in Greater London usually walk to school. The government's cycling and walking investment strategy sets a target to increase that percentage um, up to 55% by 2005. Now, to be able to get that increase in the number of children who are walking to school, we're going to need to see um, some very ambitious delivery around these uh, safer walking routes um, so that people feel it's attractive and, and a pleasure and safe for their children to walk to school. So do you have... Um, uh, a, a, a timetable on delivering on, on these safer routes to school? To well, yeah, I think, I, think, I think just on the on the general point, obviously we want to continue to work with all London schools because actually this is always in the granular detail is, is the importance of how you then build up to an overall positive picture. So working uh, with London schools to encourage maximum participation in something called STARS, which is the Sustainable Travel, Active, mm -hmm. Responsible, Safe, um, uh, and the school accreditation uh, programme. So currently about 50% uh, um, are accredited, um, delivering over 30,000 individual travel, travel behaviour change activities involving some 700,000 uh, pupils. Now, the, clearly the, the behaviour change is one thing, but the, which is important, yes. but it's also about actually making these changes on our streets so that they're e safer to walk along, not only for school children, actually it's for, you know, it's for all um, residents in, in, in London, but the sort of the delivery of yeah. the healthy streets, um, you know, how many healthy streets have we seen so far? I, it's, you know, what's, how, how are we going to actually see stuff changing on the street? So, so this is obviously something we do in partnership with the boroughs. So the boroughs have, have already invested some four and a half million in safe routes to school in the last year, which is significant through the, through the LIPS. Uh, this level of investment will increase as it should do over the coming years. Uh, as a result of the record levels of funding, which we've already talked about, that will be made available to boroughs to fund the um, Healthy Streets programme. And also, um, we're, we're working very closely with the boroughs to, to establish how best to uh, r record the investment in Healthy Routes so we can then give you the sort of precise answer to your question that you want on the number of schemes delivered. Uh, it, it's fair to say a number of schemes have already been delivered, uh, but you know we want to continue to uh, progress that in detail with the boroughs so that we get the clear answer to your question because you're absolutely right it is around individual schemes supporting individual walking routes to school that is important it is and it's also about the boroughs having you know the courage to stand up to um uh, to, to 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 the um uh, to those voices that will be very loud saying oh no we need to keep that parking space yeah. um and actually, we, we've heard um, other assembly members talking about um, a sort of relaxed approach to lip funding. Do you think the approach is still going to be relaxed to lip funding, or do you think you're going to be a bit more directional to make sure that the, um, uh, yeah. the ambition around uh, traffic reduction and making the streets safer is well, delivered. Well, well, I think, as, as the Deputy Mayor said earlier on, this is a balance, but I do think that we, within the, uh, the overall construct of healthy streets, we are uh, trying to be a little bit more consistent in how LIPS funding is uh, spent across the city, and I think that is follows a wide uh, range of discussions with individual boroughs and, indeed, with uh, London councils, as, as, as Val said. So I think this is it's not about... Um, keeping this sort of loose, I think we are trying to have a strategic sense of yeah. direction where everybody's involved. Yeah, in. yeah. I mean, there's t 
two broad pots of yeah. money. There's the Healthy Streets budget within within TfL, so that's doing things like funding the Young Travel Ambassadors and the Bikeability Schemes yes. and um, you know s some uh, some of the um, uh, Vision Zero safety approaches, so improving uh, safety issues. And then, of course, there's the LIPS programme. Um, the, the mayor is really keen that we should uh, do what we can to uh, make children safe close to school and get children walking. Um, but I don't sense any pushback from the boroughs, to be honest. Well, I think can boroughs I just do think want that, to I, do I, this work, I, and the parents strongly support it as, as well. They do, but just last night, I gather, there was a meeting in Lambeth where um, Quiet Way 7 down to Crystal Palace has been blocked um, by councillors there because there was such a strong lobby from people speaking as car drivers. I'm a car driver, but I don't choose to drive a car very much. Um, but some people speak out and then can actually block measures that are trying to make things easier for people to walk and cycle. So I'm just wondering how much support you're going to be giving to the boroughs to really deliver on this vision. Do, do you know, the, going on the quiet ways thing, I mean, I think I started my comments. Uh, I had a feedback from Will about that issue. And the quiet ways are going ahead really, really well. And yes, there are some discussions locally about particular routings and sometimes there's objections. But he went to meet some residents and there were three people in their living room and he had a conversation with them. I, I feel that public opinion is coming towards uh, delivery of some of these things now and we should be a bit more optimistic about it. Um, and just because we have to enter into a negotiation with the borough and community about routing and design, which I think is a perfectly good and reasonable thing to do, doesn't mean at the end of the day you don't deliver a programme. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to move you on because I want yeah. to also just put on record that I think your, the transport strategy is fantastic. It's got an awful lot of really exciting vision in it, and in particular the recognition of the problem of car dependency and, um, and having including a traffic reduction target. Now, I called on the mayor to do that last year, and I'm really glad it's in there. But um, getting traffic down is the absolute key to unlocking the success of the, um, uh, of the transport strategy. Um, the traffic reduction target you've got of 10 to 15% by 2041, is that a cut from current levels of traffic, so an absolute cut, or is it a cut from anticipated future levels of traffic? Uh, the cuts generally, uh, certainly on the freight side, the cut of 10% is against a growth wind of about 35%. So, um, uh, it, so it's against current levels, but it is worked through in the context of the pressure that is that is coming into the system, uh, which is which is very profound. Okay, and does it, it assume that workplace parking levies and road pricing schemes will be in place? And if so, when would they start? Well, the, uh, we've asked the boroughs in the LIPS guidance to come forward with their, uh, with their local transport strategies, including trans traffic reduction strategies. And how they go about working those through is very much up to them, but we have... Uh, in that document said that they should they can look at whether or not they want to try a workplace parking levy scheme uh, and whether or not uh, a localized congestion charging scheme as part of a broader plan uh, would, would make sense for their area okay thank you I'll, um, maybe take that up um, yeah. outside this meeting um, I also uh, just want to pick up on Silvertown tunnel um, because uh, it seems to be a sort of glaring anomaly um, in you know, this whole strategy which is about reducing traffic. We know that building new roads creates new traffic. Um, you've just been talking to previous assembly members about the public transport walking and cycling function for this mm -hmm. tunnel. Are you saying that there will be no private car use in that tunnel? No, we're not saying that. So in which case it is new road capacity and the arguments against building new road capacity, creating more traffic, would stand. Well, I think the imperative, though, is on the on the public transport 
role that it plays. And I think that is something that we have not been as effective in getting across as the, as the, point, which is the point I made earlier on in terms of the number of bus routes that you can get across the river uh, and the connections that you therefore achieve. I'm, of course, I'm with out it, of with time, with but with I, I, I hope that we can continue well. that conversation. Yes, absolutely. I'm happy to meet with you offline, by the way, on that subject. Thank you. Very happy to. Okay, thank you very much.